Hey everybody, welcome back to Gone Electric. Hey, look, my car's so clean, you can see my reflection as I'm recording. Today I thought I'd make a video about why you might want to think about buying the premium version of a better route planner. A better route planner is an app for route planning, obviously, and it's especially useful for people who don't have Teslas because sometimes REVs aren't great at route planning themselves. Up until now, I didn't think that a better route planner premium version was, was worth the purchase. However, they've added a couple very nice ways to connect your car's live data to the app so that you can track yourself a lot more accurately when you're route planning. So stick with me for the next couple minutes as I connect a couple different ways and we can compare the data. Now I am aware that there are a lot of non-Tesla EVs that do have pretty good onboard route planning, but some don't. And the VW ID4 is one of those that doesn't have great onboard route planning. So if you have an EV that's like that, you're gonna wanna listen on because I think that this might be useful for a lot of you. Okay, so step one is let's get into the beautiful interior of the ID4. I make fun of it, but I do actually like it quite a bit. And welcome, Evan. Well, thank you, ID4. And we're on the home infotainment screen. So the first thing that I'm going to do is connect to my Apple CarPlay because that is what you need to do to access a better route planner. Now, if you don't have the premium version of a better route planner, you can't actually access a better route planner through CarPlay. You have to leave it on your phone. You can't access it on the infotainment system. So. I did purchase the $5 a month A Better Route Planner premium version, and so I can actually locate it here on the CarPlay home screen and tap it. It takes a second, but it will show you the map. And so this is the connected version through premium. Um, you can actually see my state of charge here. It says 78%. Is that correct? It sure is correct. My car actually says 78%. So you might be asking yourself, how the hell does it know that? It knows that because I've connected a better route planner to my car's onboard computer via something called Enode. Enode was in beta in a better route planner for the longest time, and now it's not. The way that you connect via Enode is that you don't need any additional hardware, you don't need an OBD dongle, you don't need anything. All you need is your car, a better route planner app. You need to pay for the premium version of a better route planner, which is like five bucks a month. And then you need to know your sign-in information for your car's app. It took all of like two minutes. I tapped on connection inside a better route planner, and then it directed me to sign into my VW app. And then voila, in about 30 seconds, it was fully connected. So once you have connected via Enode, it, uh, it looks like this. Let me tap on a better route planner, and now we are in. If you uh, tap on the top left menu, it'll bring this up, and you'll see right in the middle, it says Volkswagen ID4 Pro rear wheel drive. That is my car and it is connected. You see it in green right there. It says my car's state of charge is 78% and I just got done showing you my car is indeed at 78%. Now, when you connect via Enode, you get an, a, a setting in a better route planner that you don't have otherwise. And you'll see at the top there, it says automatic settings. If you don't have the premium version and you have not connected to Enode, you don't have the, the benefit of route planning with automatic settings. The whole benefit of this automatic settings is that um, it enables live state of charge, calibrated reference consumption, weather, and traffic to help the computer in a better route, a better route planner plan your route accurately. So you can ta toggle that on and off. Like if I to toggle it off, now everything's manual and it doesn't use live or historical data to uh, plan my route. So it, you know, you would think it, it wouldn't be as accurate as what you'd think. Now, when I say uh, live and historical reference consumption, I mean this. If you look in the center here of the screen where it says reference consumption at 65 miles an hour, you'll see that it says 3.48 mi miles per kilowatt hour. That's basically my car's efficiency. At 3.48, I would say that's pretty accurate from what I see in my car. It seems to be pretty much a bullseye. If I toggle automatic settings off, you'll see that reference consumption drop to 3.16. So it goes from using your historical usage, your historical efficiency that's stored in your car's computer, onboard computer, to using sort of like a VW recommendation, which is 3.16. 
So that's a pretty big difference of efficiency between 3.16 mi miles per kilowatt hour to 3.48 miles per kilowatt hour. So if there's a difference in efficiency that it's using to calculate route planning, you can see that a live setting using historical precedence is going to be more accurate. The next thing that I want to uh, talk about is the fact that it uses live weather to update the uh, route planning accuracy. Um, it also uses traffic to update its uh, route planning. So if I scroll down here and I tap under speed, you'll see that it's making real-time adjust adjustments based on traffic and my own speed. If I scroll down a bit further and I tap on road conditions, you'll see that it's also making live adjustments based on real-time weather. You know, all these things affect efficiency. All of these things affect route planning. And now when you connect via eNode, you can have hopefully a more accurate portrayal of how long it's going to take to get to your next charger and a more accurate portrayal of what your state of charge will be when you get to your next charger. So now let's try to plan a route and I'll show you what it looks like now while you're connected to eNode. So we actually have a road trip coming up this week. We're gonna go to Vegas and I know that we're staying at the Encore Win. So we're going to try to navigate route plan for the Encore. So let's tap plan and it's gonna take a second for it to analyze it and give us a result. And there it is. It says it's gonna take four hours and 55 minutes over 278 miles with one charge estimated to be about 35 minutes. And you'll see here that it wants us to charge at Barstow. And the cool thing here, it'll show you the, that charger station's reviews and ratings at 3.9, which is not amazing. So I'm not really stoked about that says it's an eight stall charger. Um, but under here, you'll see it says wind five miles per hour. And then it says weather 84.4 degrees. So I'm hoping that it's more accurate than it used to be, but I won't know until I do it. If I were to tap on the menu under my position, I can adjust it manually. So it says departure state of charger 78%. Well, let's, let's see uh, if I was 100% how things would change. It's, Let's tap done and plan. So now I'm kind of mutilating the system here. So it's kind of automatic, but now I'm manually adjusting my, my car's state of charge to 100% because I think that's where I'm going to be when we leave on Wednesday morning. And boom, it has adjusted. And it's adjusted handsomely because now it's dropped our time to 4 hours and 37 minutes over that same span of mileage, 278 miles. You'll see there's still just one charge, but now it's moved us from Barstow, which I'm not real stoked about, to a pretty big charger, a 12 stall charger out in Baker, which is a newer one. And you'll see that we went from a 3.9 rating Barstow charger to a 4.7 rated charger in Baker. It's still Electrify America, so who the hell really knows what's gonna happen? So boom, there's a the difference. You can still use manual input if you like. And now, let's change the connection device from eNode, which doesn't require any hardware, to the OBD dongle by VPeak. So I'm gonna plug this guy in, connect via this OBD dongle, which I've never done before, so you're gonna see it for the first time when I see it for the first time. And let's see the difference in the data if there is any. So for those of you who have never seen one of these OBD dongles before, they look like this. They're really small. Uh, there is an OBD, an OBD uh, port in your car, and it's usually to the left underneath your steering wheel. So like mine is right down here. I've got my finger on it right now under here. So I'm going to plug this guy in. Let's see if I can do it while holding my phone. It's going to be hard, but I think that if I get it in the right position, I can do it, and I've done it. There, it is now in. So I've made a video all about that uh, VPeak OBD dongle before. I'll uh, put the link for that video in the description below, but it's a very useful thing if you like data. If you like data like I do, you like worrying about data, then it's probably the toy for you. Okay, first let's connect the car to the OBD dongle by tapping the car scanner app. Okay, we're now in. Now we're gonna tap on connect. It is now connected. Let's tap on the dashboard for this and see what the OBD is giving us right now. It looks like it is giving us all the correct data. State of charge is 78%, basically. Okay, let's go to a better route planner. Let's tap on my car right there in the middle. It says it's connected, but we know it's connected via the eNode right now. So let's tap edit settings. 
And indeed, it is connected via eNode. But we are going to edit connections. So we're going to tap on edit connections. And we're going to link via ABRP OBD connection because we've got that OBD dongle plugged into the car. So we're going to tap link. Understood. OK, yes, yeah, security can be an issue with OBD. Uh, so the reason I like eNode is that you it, it is purportedly more secure than using an OBD dongle. We're going to risk it right now, and we're going to tap on understood. And it's going to make us choose our dongle. OK, I have no idea which of these devices it's supposed to be. Everything's got different alphanumeric codes and no names, except for my iPad and my Apple Watch. Thank you, Apple. So let's tap on one Ooh, unsupported device. Let's not play around with this stuff, because OBD dongles are notably not super secure. So let's see what we can find out. OK, so hilariously, after doing some really quick sleuth work, I found out that the one OBD dongle that is not recommended for uh, a better route planner connection is VPeak. Hmm. Go figure. Well, at least we learned something. You can't connect the one OBD dongle that I do have. Now, if you're wondering which OBD dongle is recommended besides the VPeak, they actually state that they can't recommend any specific model, though they do go on to list four that have been shown to work. And they are listed right here, so you can take a look at those four. However, uh, I do highly recommend the eNode connection on a better route planner because it's more secure and you don't have to worry about hardware being plugged in or connected. And uh, I really do like the display. Now, I'm going to be testing out for accuracy uh, the eNode connection this week, and I will film a video where we go from uh, Long Beach to Vegas. We'll see how accurate it is with all this live data that it provides for route planning. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, if you learned something, or at least you were entertained, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you later this week on a road trip. Stay tuned. Thank you.